Good morning all. This is a Rock Trail outdoor hand warmer which I bought from Lidl about six months ago now um, for about £12.95 I think. So this is another example of a contact heater, a conduction heater, uh, very much like the uh, um, electric hot water bottles I showed in the last video. This thing imparts its heat to your hands Oh look, it's all taken to pieces um, through conduction. Three year warranty on this device and it lasted six months. So it didn't quite make it to the three years. Um, and I've had to break it apart because well, it was getting hot. Uh, this is just a decorative uh, band which went round there to hide this recess. It actually was quite difficult to get apart because all these little lugs really were a one-time hit. Uh, you're not meant to take this thing apart, certainly not easily anyway. So what do I mean by it got hot? Because surely it's meant to get hot. Yes it is. These um, side panels, which are actually aluminium I think, they're metal, they have little heating elements and you can see the heating element uh, there, thick pair of wires going up to the PCB. But it wasn't these two heating sides that were getting hot, <laughs> no. It was the printed circuit board and as well as getting quite warm it was also starting to smell of burnt electrical stuff. You know that sort of smell where enameled copper wire is burning. And I'll show you the fault as it is now. If I plug the battery back in uh, you've got three blue LEDs here and uh, normally that would tell you how full the battery is. Uh, it isn't because the battery is actually quite empty now. Uh, no amount of button pressing or pressing and holding does anything now. And if I leave this for any length of time, I mean, it's not so bad now because the battery is down to about 2.8 volts. Um, but yeah, something was getting hot and something was smelling a bit electrical. It does actually look like the hottest part. I'm shouting a bit because I'm using internal mics. The hottest part of this might be the inductor and certainly the smell um, is a bit like hot enameled copper wire. It's hard to pinpoint it exactly because I'm trouble is I'm getting out of focus on the thermal imaging camera. There is heat in the centre of the board as well. Ah, which would be the MOSFET the um, A2 SHB MOSFET. And this problem occurred, I think, because of the nature of this USB-C uh, input and output. The point is this thing is charged through USB-C, but it can also act as a power bank and supply power through the USB-C. So it's both an input and an output. And there were occasions where this wasn't really sure what it was doing, whether it was taking power in or putting power out. So for example my RAV power uh, power bank which has USB-C if you connected these two together the hand warmer would always charge the power bank not the other way around and this power bank has a feature if you press and hold this button for 10 seconds it will reverse um, this socket whether it's an input or an output but this thing never really understood that and I could never get this power bank to charge this hand warmer stroke power bank. And so I'd try and charge it with this uh, small Jackery power station. And if I connected this with the cable that came with it, which is this little short A to C cable, um, with this USB section off, then the rock trail would simply back feed the jackery, light up the LED, but it wouldn't charge. And then in fact, doesn't matter whether you switch this on or off, it still wouldn't charge. You had to actually switch this on first and then plug the rock trail in with the five volts on. Otherwise this just wouldn't take any charge. It was very temperamental. And then I tried to charge the rock trail, I think from the uh, USB-A output from here, and I was de definitely using this illuminated cable and I think I was either using this or possibly this. I can't remember but I plugged it into here and the three lights came on and the button wouldn't do anything very much as I showed you just now. 
And then it started getting warm up at the top here, not from the heating panels, but from the PCB. And then it started to smell and that was the end of this. So that's it, it's dead. We can do a tear down now. Now the question is, do I take this back, sort of just close it up and pretend it's uh, not been taken apart, get my £12.95 back? Or do I make a tear down video, which quite possibly will earn £12.95. This will be destroyed in the process, of course. Uh, doesn't really matter either way. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is attempt to pull out these uh, thermistors on the end of these pieces of enameled copper wire. Oh, they're quite well stuck in there, aren't they? What about this one? Is this one going to come out? Yes, this one's coming out. And as you can see, there is a little bead thermistor on the end of these enamel copper wires. So if I can get the one out from the battery, I can actually take the battery out of the unit. Let's do that. This one's proving to be a bit stubborn, so I'm gonna have to use a bit of force on here and try and yank it out. It really doesn't wanna come out. There it is. So again, another little bead thermistor on the end of the enamel copper wire. Okay, now the battery can come out. And so, yeah, it's pretty symmetrical. You've just got a heating pad under, I'm pretty sure this is an aluminium plate. It's sort of um, got this plastic rubberized coating, which is starting to peel off in places. And you can see that it's metal because there are little lugs here that are bent over through holes. So I could take that out actually, and we could take a look at that. Uh, yeah, so I just need to bend these metal lugs up and that plate should drop out of this half of the hand warmer plastic body. Can I push it out like this? Yeah. So, oh yeah, that's quite sharp. That's definitely aluminium. Right, that's off. Um, yeah, it's a very simple heating element. It's on a flexible PCB, it looks like. I don't know, would you call that a printed circuit board? It's obviously photo reproduced in some way. Um, I don't know whether this is a, a metal element or carbon. Don't know, see if we can peel that off actually. But yeah, it's very, very simple. That's just stuck on the underside of this piece of metal. Um, there is an attempt to separate the heating pad. Oh, there's actually a little bit of stuck on foam there. Um, separate it from the battery by these ribs. So at the midpoint there, the heating element is probably about five millimeters away from the battery. There's also this bit of foam, although I think that's primarily to hold the thermistor against it. Oh, lots of details on the battery. Let's have a look. So lithium uh, ion rechargeable battery model ICR. I can't quite remember what ICR means. I think it's lithium cobalt round. I think the R is either round, in other words, cylindrical or rechargeable. Uh, 18650, two pieces. They will be in parallel, I assume. 3.7 volts, yes. 5,200 milliamp hours, yes. So they'll be uh, 26, is it? 26 hundred milliamp hours each, 19.24 watt hours. Uh, Dongguan Hai Sincere Battery Company Limited, do not disassemble. Right, time to take the PCB out. Um, it's quite small, doesn't look like this much on the rear either, but we'll see. I wonder whether the enameled copper wires, you see the heating elements and the battery are connected on these beautiful little JST connectors. Are they mini ones? I think they are, they might be two mil. But are the uh, enamel copper wires just soldered on the back? Yes, they are. Isn't that disappointing? I mean, actually this thing was quite clever. Um, these are dual color LEDs. So you've got the blue LEDs, which showed you the battery level. Um, and there was also a red LED in here and that would show you the heating mode. So one LED was low, two LEDs medium and three high. Uh, switch on the back, which was coupled up to uh, the switch there. And a couple of transistors, but that's all that's on the back apart from the connections for these three 
thermistors. But when this thing was heating the pads, yes, there were three temperature levels for the three heat settings, but it also seemed to affect the low temperature point at which this thing cycled on and off because it didn't leave these things on all the time. It would raise them up to a certain temperature and then it would shut them off. And then only when they dropped back below a certain temperature, uh, as measured by these little thermistors, would this thing turn back on. And I used to take this thing to bed, actually. This is a very cold house <laughs> and uh, you needed a bit of warming up uh, to fall asleep. And I'd often leave this thing switched on all night. Not a good idea taking a lithium battery to bed and leaving it switched on all night. But um, yeah, and I'm, I mean, in, in a warm bed, this thing on setting one never came on. So it was quite happy just sitting there all night and it didn't drain the battery. It didn't really do anything. Just gives me that initial warmth uh, to warm my hands up when you get into bed and your, your hands or your whole body's all cold. Anyway, back to the electronics. So what have we got on here? We've got a little chip there, an inductor here, 2R2. What's that? 2.2 microhenry, something like that. I did feel that the smell of burning might have been the enamel on this inductor, but I'm not actually sure that's the case anymore. But certainly this doesn't work, so it was killed off by whatever I did to it. Let's take a look at those two chips. Right, we have an unmarked microcontroller. That's the 16-pin device here. I assume it's a microcontroller. Um, the little power controller chip next to the inductor is an ET89742. I'm just printing out the data sheet for that. And then there's an A2SHB SOT23 on the top and a couple of S12 transistors, I presume, on the bottom. We'll take a look at those in a moment. Okay, so the ETA9742 is pretty much a made for USB-C bidirectional uh, power bank type devices because it's got um, bi-directional power conversion with single inductor. So it's a three amp switching charger, but also when it flips around the other way, it's a 2.4 amp boost with an, uh, a system for uh, battery measurement, three LED indicators for battery level. So pretty much made for this application uh, up to 96% efficiency five volt synchronous boost switching charger yeah so made for the USB-C type bi-directional port application yeah for charging it uses a proprietary control scheme that eliminates the current sense resistor for conventional constant current control uh, it can also output a five volt voltage in the reverse direction by boosting from the battery it only needs a single induct to provide power bidirectionally with a proprietary automatic mode detect and switch scheme which works most of the time but if you confuse it it blows itself up never to work again so if this little chip does all of the uh, USB-C bidirectional power battery charging and all that stuff what's the microcontroller for well of course you've got to measure the uh, temperature with these three thermistors so there'll be three analog to digital uh, inputs in use there. Also, of course, you've got a pulse width modulate the power going to these heating elements to provide the three different uh, temperature levels. So that's what the microcontroller is doing. It's doing all of the heat related stuff. So there it is. That's what's inside a rock trail uh, hand warmer stroke power bank. Uh, there's no way I can take this back now. It's completely dismantled. So do us a favor, would you? And hit the like button. Hit the like button. And then hopefully I can get this lot paid for. Okay, cheerio.